four, three, two, one, ignition, invisible power, and lift off. Go Cygnus, go Falcon. Falcon 9 and Cygnus begin their flight, taking aim on the International Space Station. Pitch and roll program are in. Falcon 9, parking out to the northeast. And what do you hear pressure from it? Plus 40 seconds, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40. Hour and nominal. This is our 10th mission of the year and second to the International Space Station. And we've throttled down our engines in preparation for Max-Q, which is coming up here in a few seconds. This is the largest structural vehicle load. Supersonic. This is the largest structural load that the vehicle will see on ascent. Max-Q. Great news. We've passed through Max-Q and are throttling those engines back up. Next up will be five events in rapid succession. That will be main engine cutoff, stage separation, second engine start or SES-1, the boost back burn startup on the first stage, and fairing separation. Main engine cutoff, or what we call MECO, is where all nine M1D engines on the Falcon 9 first stage will shut down. It's all those engines that you see there on your screen. And this will be followed by stage separation, or the separation of the first and second stages. A few seconds later, the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite to boost Cygnus to low Earth orbit, which is also known as SES-1. Then Falcon 9's first stage will ignite again to orient itself to head back to land with the boost back burn. Shortly thereafter, the fairing halves will separate and expose the spacecraft to the vacuum of space. Again, those five events coming up in a few seconds. Miko stage separation, SES-1, the boost back burn starting up, as well as fairing separation. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. And back again. Stage one boost back startup. And there we've had Miko stage separation, the MBAC engine on the second stage ignited, as well as the boost back burn starting up on the first stage vehicle. And some awesome views there on your screen on your left hand side is a view of, from the first stage, on your right hand side, a view from the second stage. Fairing separation confirmed. And excellent news. We were able to see and hear the call out for confirmation of fairing separation. You can actually see one of the fairing halves falling back to Earth on your right hand screen. Stage one boost back shutdown. And we heard that call out, and you can see on your left-hand screen that the engines on the first stage vehicle have shut down, and that concludes the boost back burn for the first stage vehicle. You can also see that the grid fins are now deploying on the first stage. Both vehicles are following nominal trajectory. And great call outs that both vehicles are on nominal trajectories. Some awesome views on your screen. Again, on your left-hand side is a view from the first stage. On your right-hand side is a view from the second stage looking at our MVAC engine. You're watching a live webcast for NG20, Northrop Grumman's 20th resupply mission to the orbiting laboratory. This is SpaceX's 10th mission for 2024 and the second flight to the International Space Station just this year. You might be interested to know in order to get to space, the rocket has to do more than just go up. It also has to go sideways and really, really fast. At liftoff, gravity is pulling straight down on the vehicle. As we ascend, we tilt the engines, and the technical term for that is called gimbling, and that turns the rocket horizontally. And we are still going up, but we are now also heading horizontally away from the launch pad, and that's what we call a gravity turn. 
An object typically needs to go 7.5 kilometers per second or 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and get into orbit. And that is exactly what this vehicle just performed. And on your left-hand side, again, is the first stage making its way back down to Earth. Today, we do have a land landing, so we do require three burns in order for it to make its way back to its landing zone. We've already completed the boost back burn for the vehicle as it oriented itself heading back towards land. Next up will be the entry burn, and that's where three of the Merlin engines will reignite. This helps to slow the vehicle down as it re-enters the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. And then we'll be followed by the last burn, which is the landing burn. That's a single engine burn that begins, that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to touch down back on Earth. And a really cool view of that first stage vehicle from our ground tracking camera. That looks amazing. <laughs> And that entry burn is coming up here in just about 30 seconds or so. Views look amazing today. Again, you can see on your left-hand screen the view of Earth in the background of the first stage as it's coming back down to Earth to land on our landing zone. Right-hand screen, again, is of the second stage looking aft at our MBAC engine. Stage one, entry burn startup. We just heard that call out, and you can see on your left-hand screen that the engines on the first stage vehicle have reignited. It's just about a 17-second burn. Stage one, entry burn shutdown. And stage an awesome, one, FTS has saved. Awesome tracking view of our first stage vehicle. As you can see that the entry burn has concluded. And the first stage vehicle continues to make its way back down to Earth. Both vehicles continuing on a nominal trajectory. And this is an incredible view that we are getting of the first stage vehicle heading back to land. Right now it's using its four grid fins to guide... Stage one transonic. ...to guide the vehicle during its descent. And this is... Amazing. You can see those four grid fins deployed. What a view that Stage we have. One landing burn. <laughs> and you can see that the landing burn has begun for the vehicle. Let's watch as Falcon 9 touches back down on land. Stage 2 FDS has saved. Stage 1 landing leg deploy. What a sight to see. Falcon has touched down. This booster just completed its 10th flight. 